The AP College Football Preseason Top 25 has been released. No surprise, Alabama, the top-ranked team in the country, third straight year. They've been ranked number one. The only other team that says they could do that, Oklahoma, back in the mid-80s. Clemson comes in number two, Georgia third. Wisconsin, the first Big Ten team ranked. They are ahead of Ohio State, which checks in at number five. Washington then checks in for the Pac-12 at sixth. Oklahoma. Miami, Auburn, and Penn State round out the top 10. We'll have much more of the rankings as we continue here on the show. I want to bring in Paul Feinbaum, Greg McElroy here to talk about the rankings. Paul, I'll start with you. Uh, did they get it right there in the top five, six, seven? I think they did. And, and Alabama being number one, Matt, it's about as shocking as uh, the first Monday in September being Labor Day. It seems like it happens every year. The one thing that I noticed that I think is a, is a casualty of the Urban Meyer controversy is Ohio State slipping below Wisconsin. You can argue back, back and forth uh, on that, but, but I think because of the uncertainty of Urban, Ohio State may have moved down one. Other than that, it looks pretty predictable. Greg, your thoughts? Yeah, I actually look at Alabama at number one and knowing the key pieces that they have to replace off of last year's roster, most notably on defense, in the secondary primarily more than anywhere else, trying to replace their top six defensive backs, I would actually have Clemson at number one ahead of Alabama. I know Alabama won the game convincingly in New Orleans last year, but Clemson has more key pieces returning from a semifinal team a year ago. You know, I look at the top 10 as one. I see three teams in there from the SEC, three teams in there from the Big Ten. And, Paul, this has kind of been the argument over the past couple of years. Has the Big Ten, at least at the top of the league, been able to catch the top of the SEC in terms of top heavy? What do you make of the three teams from the Big Ten in the top 10? Yeah, I mean, listen, the Big Ten's a great league, but uh, its last title was in, in 2014 with Ohio State. And since then, Ohio State has, has not looked good, getting blown out by Clemson and last year, of course, failing to get in there. Uh, the, the SEC uh, is the dominant conference. You can argue about eight, uh, one, to, 1 to 14, though, and I think that will be determined later. But, but I, I do think it's remarkable that, that Penn State is still hanging around because uh, they lost a great deal, including Barkley, but they, are, they, they do have Ohio State in Happy Valley this year. Greg, I want to look at, at Miami is at 8th, Washington is at 6th, and then you've got Auburn checking in at ninth, and Auburn-Washington is actually a week one game. Agree or disagree that Washington, at least for the rankings purposes, is the better football team than Auburn who checks in at nine? They are if you're going to project out. Now, Auburn will be favored in that game, but I know some AP voters actually try to forecast what the record might be at season's end. And Auburn has to go to Mississippi State, who'd ranked in the top 20. They have to go to Alabama and to Georgia. So a lot of experts have actually forecasted Auburn hovering around 9 or 10 wins, which would have them around number 9. Whereas Washington, their schedule is slightly more manageable than what Auburn is. If you look at the snapshot of today, their rosters, I like Auburn's roster better than Washington. But if you try to forecast what the team might look like in December, then Washington likely would come ahead of Auburn when it comes to the rankings. All right, let's have a look at some of the other rankings now, starting with 11. It really looks like a virtual Notre Dame schedule over the entirety of that program's history. We've got Michigan State at 11, Notre Dame 12, Stanford in there at 13, Bryce Love coming back, Michigan, who opens up with Notre Dame week one, USC, pair of Big 12 schools there, TCU, West Virginia. Will Greer, the quarterback out of West Virginia, has a lot of people thinking maybe they can get up there and make a couple of moves. Mississippi State, life after Dan Mullen, takes place in Starkville. Life after Jimbo Fisher in Tallahassee, they're in 19th. And Virginia Tech, Tex checks in at 20. Paul, I'll start with you, 11 through 20. What jumps out to you? Yeah, I, I'm interested in the fact that uh, Stanford is at 13. I, I think Stanford has a chance with Bryce Love to, to really make uh, a lot of noise. They have SC the second week, so that, that's interesting. Yeah, Michigan-Notre uh, Dame is, is, is the game that we'll all hear about opening weekend, but, but I think Greg made a great point that, that Auburn-Washington game carries the power. But remember back a year ago, th seeing Florida State way down there, Matt, it was Alabama 1 versus Florida State 3. It was billed as the greatest, biggest opening yep. game weekend ever. It didn't live up to it uh, by the end of the season. Yeah, that's what jumped out. You look at Jimbo Fisher now that Willie Taggart, the head coach of Florida State, to see them outside of the top five, perhaps a bit surprising. Uh, Greg, I had touched on West Virginia a second ago with Will Greer. 
typically we see a team that opens up in these rankings around 17, 18, 19 to kind of jump up into the conversation. Find me a team in the, this little quadrant here that you think that could perhaps make a run up the rankings. I love Michigan. I know that Paul has basically <laughs> filled 20 hours a week on his show about how Jim Harbaugh is so beyond overrated. But he's been abnormally quiet this offseason. And if you look at the personnel coming back on the defensive side of the football, that defense will travel. Now, the Big Ten East is as good as it gets. They have four legitimate college football playoff contenders in that division alone. But Michigan's personnel on defense will keep them in every game. And if they can finally solve the issue at quarterback that's plagued them for a few years with Shea Patterson, then that team has all the makings of one of those dark horse contenders for the playoff that nobody's really talking about at this point. Paul, you know, this Greg, is Harbaugh's year, isn't it? Well, yeah. By, by the way, Greg, I know you've been out of the country, uh, but <laughs> lately, the last, lately, 20 hours a week are filled with the other school in the Big Ten. That's Ohio State. I know you haven't been following Fair. that story at all. Uh, but listen, I, I think Harbaugh has a really good team, but can he get past the opening weekend against Notre Dame and right. the final weekend against Ohio State? That's the only reason I wouldn't put Jim Harbaugh that high.